Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel F1 Aeronomicist. This week we have two of the most iconic motorsport events on the same race weekend. Yes, we are going to talk about the Monaco Grand Prix and the Indy 500. In this video, we're going to talk about the differences of an Indy car going round in ovals and an F1 car going round on track. This video is sponsored by Rally, a community bus rideshare service for the Indy 500. More about them in this video later on. But let us first dive into the DNA of the American motorsports. To understand what drives the design philosophy of Indy cars, we need to understand the DNA of American motorsports. So American motorsports circles around spectatorship and raceability and not around technology. So they have a bottom up approach in which the driving question is what kind of racing would our fans enjoy? And the answer is quite simple. It's wheel to wheel racing with the potential of surprising winners. And they basically want a photo finish every single time and pretty much very close wheel to wheel racing to ensure that you know everybody is having fun and there are some awe moments throughout the race and not just one or two moments that happen in the entire race. So to level the entire field you need to have a methodology and that is what American Motorsports has in place. So you have Dallara as a sole supplier of chassis with Honda and Chevrolet as the engine manufacturers. So everybody starts with pretty much the same car and it's the drivers, the race management, the team management and the race car setup that makes all the difference. Additionally, they also have something called the balance of performance, which basically limits the performance of your car if you are too far ahead of the competition. So if you are Red Bull in IndyCar, they would probably put an additional ballast onto your car to limit your performance or they would limit your engine power to slow you down so that you are competing with the rest of your field and not just with yourself. So what is the difference between the setup of an F1 car and an Indy car and how are Indy cars set up to account for oval racing? Well, let's figure that out. Well, because the ovals are asymmetric, the car is set up asymmetrically. When it comes to the mechanical side, the tire camber, toe, are asymmetrically set up and even the spring rates and the damper rates are asymmetric. Well, why not take the advantage of an asymmetric weight distribution also where you put all the heavy bits such as the radiator on the inside. So if it's a left-handed oval, then all the heavy bits are on the inside so as to assist the centripetal force and thus that allows you to go faster around those corners. But remember, in all of this, the cars externally have to be symmetric in nature. Also, why not have specific aero setups for ovals, such as less loaded wings? Because wings are not the major downforce producing elements on the car. They are there to balance the car. And the major downforce producing element is the floor. And this is because the floor in ground effect is more efficient with respect to the downforce to drag ratio as compared to the wings. And wings also create wakes which limits raceability. Additionally, they also have rear tire fairings. And this is again to get around the problem of tire wakes and raceability so as to encourage closer racing. Additionally, what you'll also see are that the cooling requirements are minimalistic because of the large speeds that they go through all the time which means that there is enough mass flow rate to cool the engines and the brakes. Usually there are some small NACA duct or ducts to facilitate the cooling. Well, if you're planning to go to the Indy 500 this year and want to get away with all the traffic problems, then why not sign up with Rally? Rally is a community bus share ride services wherein basically you avoid the entire problem of parking, of drinking and driving, even reducing your carbon footprint and most importantly, not being part of the traffic problem yourself. Rally's core value is community building. So the entire rideshare experience is like a picnic with your loved ones and people who love the sport. So come crack open some cold ones with everyone. Rally's delivery of service 
is also all about flexibility. So why wait? Book your rideshare service using the link in the description below and while you're at it, use the code NDAero20 to get a flat 20% off on your rideshare service and experience. So what are some of the intelligent design features on the IndyCar which encourages racing and makes driving a bit safer? Let's understand that. Because you have such close wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing at such high speeds, there is a high probability of a big crash. But IndyCar have inherent design features to avoid this. How? Well, the maximum Y coordinate must belong to the floor and not to the wheel, which prevents the wheels from touching directly that normally would result in a scary accident. So in this case, if you are side by side, chances are your floors will initially touch rather than the wheels. However, there can still be an interlocking of another car between the wheels and the underbody. So to prevent that, there is a side flow blocker, which is basically a sidewall on the floor that prevents interlocking between the wheels and the underbody of another car. And then because you have such a strong slip streaming effect, there are chances that your front wheels can touch the rear wheels of another car and that can lift you off and you can have a scary accident. And for this purposes, Indy cars have rear bumpers, which basically avoid any longitudinal wheel to wheel contact. And these three design features are quite unique to IndyCar racing and they are there to encourage wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing which is again the DNA of American motorsports. Next up, let us understand how IndyCar has leveraged aerodynamics to make racing at those speeds safer. Race cars have never been studied at 90 degree yaw angle and one of the big problems in IndyCar was if your car was spun 90 degrees at 300 kilometers an hour your car would flip quite aggressively. But by studying the aerodynamics of the car at 90 degree yaw angle, Dallara was able to minimize the flip over movement. And how did they do this? This was done by producing high amount of downforce on the floor even at 90 degree yaw angle as you can see on the image on the right. And then also creating a high enough high pressure zone onto the lower half of the sidewall which basically counteracts the flip over movement. And this two features allowed the cars to be much safer wherein you leverage aerodynamics at a 90 degree yaw to ensure that you know your cars don't flip over if in case you are spun around by another car. The second big problem was the nose takeoff. So if a driver misjudged his overtaking and touched wheels coming from behind, as you can see on the image on the right, what would happen is this would put the car in a slight nose up condition and because of an aerodynamic instability, the car would flip over and that is quite dangerous at those high speeds, right? So the cutouts that you see on the floor in Indy cars are there to exactly prevent this or at least ensure that these happen only at really, really high speeds. So basically with those cutouts, Dallara was able to add 20 to 30 to 40 kilometers an hour, I think to the V critical speed, which is the speed above which the car would eventually take off anyways. So by cutting a hole out onto the floor, they basically reduce the high pressure region, which is what creates the flip up moment in this attitude of the car. So the next time you go and actually check the cars out and see a hole cut out, remember that that is aerodynamics at play to make driving safer. So this was my quick attempt at giving you an appreciation for some of the design features on an Indy car and highlighting some of the difference with an F1 car. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button and if you enjoy F1 and racing content, subscribe to my channel. Have a good one. You are watching F1 Aerodynamicist.